Good morning, class. Today we're going to be learning about porous stand types. Boring. Shh. A healthy forest is composed of several different stand types, or groups of trees of similar height and age. And each stand is important to the health of the entire forest. Who cares? You're so rude. Each stand in the forest supports different wildlife and plant species, and the forest in turn supports us in our community. Yeah, right. I haven't been in the forest in years. How does the forest support me? You're so out of it. I bet you couldn't go a single day without using something from a forest. Class, I'm not done with my lesson yet. I want in on this. I can go a day without a forest. Well, then prove it. Yeah, Nate, put your money where your mouth is. Class, up here. There's no way you can go a whole day on this bet, too. Class, please, pay attention. OK, how about this? You can go a day without using something from a forest. We'll give you our dessert for a week. And if we can't, we'll give you ours. Deal. Oh, I give up. Tell me how it ends. I'm Ross Holloway, and I work for the Oregon Department of Forestry as a forester here on the Tillamook State Forest. In the natural uh, environment, wind, floods, fire created different kinds of stands on our forest landscape. Uh, everything is dynamic in the forest system in the natural world. So the wildlife that lives here, the plants that thrive here, have all adapted to different kinds of conditions. And so to provide for all those different kinds of wildlife and plants, we have to have a variety of forest conditions out here on the landscape. Man, I can't wait for school to be over. Yeah, it's gonna be great. What you guys talking about? Buzz off, Tanner. Yeah, it's none of your business. What? I'm just making a conversation. Just tell me. Fine, if you must know, we're going mountain biking after school. And while we're there, we're gonna look for deer to take pictures of. So you're giving up on the bet already? What do you mean? That area you guys like to bike in is regeneration. It's a very ideal place to find deer feeding in the open. Drats. Yeah, fine, let's go see a movie instead. Different animals need different forest types, types and stand types, uh, primarily because of their different needs for things like food, shelter, uh, nesting areas. As I mentioned, forests evolve through natural disturbances, and the animals that depend on them also evolve with those same disturbances. So we have wildlife that depends on openings primarily for food. We have other wildlife that depends heavily on the older forest for shelter and for nesting. The characteristics of a regeneration stand are a stand that's very open, so the larger trees are gone either as a result of a natural disturbance or sometimes in the case of harvesting, like here on the forest. So you'll have young trees, seedlings, uh, you'll have lots of shrubs and brush species growing uh, vigorously in those areas. What you working on, Nate? Nothing, just doing some extra credit work. Nothing to do with forests, so don't worry. Oh, okay, so I guess you're not gonna work on the table that's made of wood, right? Oh, right, yeah. I'll just sit on this plastic chair and write. With what? What do you mean with what? A pencil, of course. A pencil made out of wood? Fine, I'll write with a pen. And where do you think the paper comes from? Fine, I don't need any extra credit work. I'm going to lunch. Uh, the forests uh, have a lot of different economic values. Uh, the timber and the logs that come from harvesting timber in the forest are a major economic value of the forest. Uh, but also the water that flows from the forest provides drinking water for much of the metropolitan area uh, to the east of the forest here. Uh, and the recreational values of the forest uh, are also very high. And we have lots of recreational use goes on here and contributes to the local economy that way. Uh, the characteristics of a closed single canopy stand is a stand that has grown, the trees or seedlings have grown up, they've started to close in as the branches grow and the canopies close together, so there's not very much light underneath the canopy of those stands. So an understory stand is a stand that's gotten a little larger, uh, some of the trees may have died out or been thinned out, and so shrubs and vegetation starts to grow again under that stand. Uh, we're, we're actually standing in an area that is uh, what I would call an understory stand. A layered stand is actually an understory stand that's gotten a little older and larger 
And so those trees and shrubs that are growing underneath that upper canopy are starting to get bigger. And what you end up with is multiple canopies, which is what we call layering and why we refer to it as a layered stand. Wow, that looks good. What's for lunch? Uh, just leave me alone. I just want to eat my sandwich in peace. Sandwich, huh? What kind? Peanut butter and huckleberry jam. Ha! Where do you think those huckleberries come from? Gah! Get off! <laughs> well, much like animals, different types of plants need different stand types because of the way they've evolved with those natural systems. So we have plants uh, that thrive in shady areas and don't do well out in open sunlight. We have other plants that do very well in openings and you won't find them in the shaded area of the forest very much at all. So much like wildlife, plants have adapted to different conditions and fill different niches in the forest. An old growth stand is, is a layered stand that has gotten much larger and older. And some very unique characteristics start to develop in the canopies. Uh, we have things like lichens and mosses that we don't find in some of the younger stands. Uh, many large trees, many snags, lots of what we call down wood, logs on the ground that are decaying or trees that have fallen over that are decaying. Uh, so a very diverse stand oftentimes with many different species and many different canopy layers. Well, I learned my lesson. Nice been doing business with you guys. Don't forget my pet children.